Welcome everybody to Tome Wars Fight Night. This is going to be a great night, isn't it? That's right, it sure is. There's so much excitement in the air, it's electric. It sure is. So, uh, why don't we get things kicked off here by talking about the contenders. Why don't you tell us about the Helix? Alright, our first contender is the Line 6 Helix. It has over 200 amp, cab, mic, and effects models. That's a lot of features, isn't it? <laughs> it's a lot. There's also a beautiful 6.2 inch LCD display. Man, that thing looks so pretty. I just want to dump a bucket of gravy on it and sop it up with a biscuit. You've got problems. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it also has 12 inputs, 10 outputs, and 4 effects loops. That is a lot of effects loops. I don't know any other product that has that. That's amazing. So many loops. One of the other things that separates this product from other products on the market are its customizable LCD scribble strips. All right, Biscuits, tell us about the Kemper Stage. It's lean, it's mean, it's the soul-sucking machine. <laughs> it's known to suck the soul out of an amplifier so well that you can't tell the difference between the Kemper and the real thing. It's got the feel, it's got the tone, it's got the texture, and it sounds absolutely amazing. Yeah, but does it have scribble strips and a nice big LCD screen? No, it doesn't. It's got a screen that gets the job done, and you know what? It doesn't need all the stuff that the Pretty Boy Helix has because it's got Morph, and that's a feature that no other product on the market has. Oh, right. It morphs. Yeah. yeah. I think the Helix is in trouble tonight. <laughs> I really do. I think that this is going to be a great fight, and I guess, what's your prediction tonight? I think it could be anybody's game. We have two great products. Yes, we do. Let's get it started. Welcome to Tone Wars Fight Night. Up first is TJ Richardson, the lead guitarist for Salvation's End, a progressive power metal band. TJ's worked with singers like the YouTube sensation Rob Lundgren, who's had millions of views on his videos. And around here, TJ's known as the janitor because he does a lot of sweeps and he does them well. <laughs> Up next is Aaron Lucas, the lead guitarist for Interstate Revival. Interstate Revival is a mainstream rock band with a heavy blues influence. Aaron has been in several successful projects in our area and Interstate Revival is his current passion. Up next we have Phil Stewart and Johnny Neville, the guitar duo of LC Banks. LC Banks has traveled to LA and back several times and they've even played the world famous Whiskey A Go Go on Sunset Boulevard in West Hollywood, California. Lastly we have Dave Seymour. Just kidding, he's the lead guitarist for Dead in Five, one of the more well-known bands in our area. In fact, Gary Holt from the band Slayer and Exodus gave Dead in Five a really nice shout out on social media and told everybody to go buy their album that was just released a couple months ago. Okay, so now that we've discussed the contenders and all the features that they have and met the players... Are you ready to rock? So what we're doing right now is uh, the 5150 um, block EVH, letter huh? EVH out of both units. And um, I will go ahead and mute the mics and we'll get started. Here we go. Okay, so what do we got? Um, yeah, uh, I think the first one, A, I'm going to go ahead and rank that one maybe like a four. A four? Yeah. Okay. Is that and tone or feel? Tone or it's, feel. Uh, 
honestly the tone and, and the feel. To be honest okay, with you. so tone and feel for. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, B, I'll go ahead and rank that a solid eight. B, a solid eight. Yep. Okay. For both tone and feel. Yep. Okay. okay. So how how did A feel to you? Um, it kind of felt lackluster, almost like uh, not enough sustain in a lot of the notes. Okay. Yep. All right. Did your strings feel okay, or as it was? I mean, how were your hands? Were your hands dissatisfied with what they were playing, or? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. No. Um, B definitely sounded a lot, uh, uh, a lot fuller. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, uh, definitely. I'm, I'm feeling B on that one too. Are you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what would you rank? Well, while, while we're on the subject of B, what would you rank B? Uh, Tone and feel. That one would definitely be like a solid ten. Solid really? 10. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I, I really like that one. How uh, the sustain and just how it feels. Okay. Overall. All right. Um, so a solid ten on yep. those. Yep. And then what about what about uh, A? A three. Really? Okay. Yeah, I, I just it feels like it's like lacking in three, overdrive you said? almost. You know, okay. It doesn't it's just yeah. Yep, I, I couldn't. I, I, I just couldn't. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, <laughs> I couldn't. no, that's the, the thing is about this whole thing is that I told these guys before we went live, I said, be honest, you know, mm. be brutally honest. Obviously, we don't want to, you know, bash anything or be cruel, but we have to be honest. And I think what you're doing here is just being honest, you know. Right. Um, you know, so because uh, because we're trying to give you guys the best information that we yeah. can give you, and just so you know, too, the guys watching, like, um, just keep in mind that uh, you're watching it and your hands aren't involved. It's just your ears. These guys, it's their hands right. and their ears. And believe it or not, we all know this. I mean, this is common. You listen with your hands. Mm -hmm. You know, if it feels good to your hands, um, your ears are going to like it more. If right. it feels terrible, your ears are, you know, there's like that battle that goes on, right? Right. <laughs> So that one, a I would probably rank that one um, probably a four. Okay. And then uh, <clears throat> both B. tone and feel. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then uh, B, I'd probably rank that one uh, seven, both in tone and feel. A seven tone and feel. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So here we are in rev territory. Let me mark this off and uh, boom. All right. Mute the mics and we go. Tone and feel. Okay. 
Okay. And then B, I would give um, definitely an eight on both. Eight on both. Okay. Yeah. I felt both reusable tones. A just felt like it just had that little bit of extra grit. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think, um, but B was B was good. Um, I could see me using both tones depending on, depending on what song I was doing. Okay. I understand there's kind of a range. Um, I definitely probably say I give it about a six. The other one maybe about a, B about a five. Okay, so yeah. six on A, B on five. Okay, for both tone and feel. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Did they feel responsive? I mean, I, I just I'm just trying to push. Yeah, I mean, a I felt B. Them. I had to maybe. I wasn't getting that attitude okay. that I wanted. Pretty good. I'm leaning toward B. I just felt B like I had a little more control over. Okay. Um, but uh, but they both were on this side of that those calves. They're both pretty tasty. Okay. Um, I'd People say are A agreeing though. I, with, with you, they agree. Yeah. I um, B, B, B. I definitely say I'd give A probably about a, about a six and B. I'd throw a seven at, at them both. Okay. You know, I felt like neither one of them. I really had to really grind my pick to get it. Okay. Get it going. You know. So sixes and sevens. Yeah. Got it. All right. <laughs> All right, here we go with the second Archon. Do the same, same exact thing I said before with that. Okay, you six know, and um, seven. It, yeah. Just beef, beef felt a little bit better. Okay, so felt a little bit more open. So um, six on which one? Yes, so I'm six on A, seven on B. Okay, six A, seven. So here we are with a Fender basement, and take it away. doctored up a little bit okay um both, both were good uh, okay um and i know with finger picking us that gets it a little bit lower tones yeah yep. for sure um well and plus these are just chosen so they're not yeah. dialed in for like whatever pickup you're going to use for sure, or for sure i just choose them and you know absolutely absolutely yeah. um but yeah I mean, bo both were pretty tasty presets you know okay um i definitely say a just because it seems like when you want that kind of chimey, mm -hmm. high end, if you're doing something kind of mellow. Mm -hmm. um, so I would probably throw a, throw a seven at both for, for A, and then maybe like five for B. Okay, yeah. so seven and five. <laughs> That one, I think I'd go with A again. Okay. I think so, I'd definitely to. Okay. But I'd give that one like, a, I'd say that's about a seven. Okay. Right. 
All right. Tone, I really like the tone on it. Okay. Um, B, I mean, I'd say tone and feel. So. Mm -hmm. Got it. Uh, B, I'd say around like a five. Okay. It's kind of the same vibe as the last one, kind of. Okay. I like that, you know, kind of those big bass tones yeah. kind of in the okay. guitar. All right. So, yeah, I would say about five on feel. And, okay. You know, okay. All right. Are we gonna do one more angle, good, or are you skip it to the Friedman? Uh, let's go to Friedman. Two, I liked A better, okay. but I'd say both of them are a little low on the gain for what I usually okay. roll with. Um, good tones, but I'd say A. I'd probably give like a, I'd probably give like a four. Okay. And uh, with tone, I mean feel, I'd give a little bit higher. Okay. I'd probably say like a six on the feel. Okay. Because it does have a good feel to it, but it just doesn't have the power behind yeah. it that I like. Yep. Um, B, I'd probably say like. To okay. 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 For tone to, and feel. Yeah, for tone and Got feel, it. I would say. All right, are we going to the rev? Yeah, let's go to rev here. Give me a second, and I will get some revs going here. Okay. Yeah, it sounds nice and full. Uh huh. And I can get those nice chugs out of it. That's what gotcha. I like to get. You get that <laughs> chugginess. Uh, the A, I'd probably give like a, I'd probably give that like an eight. Okay. That's something right. I could definitely see using on stage. Nice. Okay. Or something. Um, B, kind of same thing. It's just not quite pushing it up to where I wanted to get. It has a good tone to it, but. Um, I'd, I'd probably say that's like a five. A five? So okay. I'm so tone and feel. Five. Okay. But yeah, I like those, that chugginess. Gotcha. <laughs> Everybody likes the chuggy chugs. That's yeah. right. Are you sticking with revs or are you moving on? Let's go to Marshall. All right. Marshall. Marshall. You like Marshalls, All right. right? I do like Marshalls. All right. So, so the Marshall, Marshall fell totally flat with our last player. Let's see if we can, uh... See if we can redeem the marshal. Redeem the marshal this time. Let's see. What'd you think? I like the A again. Yeah. <laughs> I like the A. It had that nice full feel that I like. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's quite as much up on the gain and everything that I quite like, but everything sounds good. So okay. I still got to give it, I'd have to say it's like a seven. Okay. It's still really good. So, so can, A? Yeah. So we a just got to keep in mind we're comparing <clears throat> them to each other too. Yeah. Right? Like what yeah. would you rate this? Like all things considered yeah, equal. Like, like I would say, I would say seven. Okay. It's a nice tone. I really like it. So seven on A, mm -hmm. and then one on B. 
B, I'd say uh, on that one, like a four. Okay, so seven and four. Yeah. <coughs> Not a big fan of that one. Okay. Okay, so here we go with the another 5150. <laughs> What was that again? Um, a is probably like a six, feels like a five, B seven, and it, it felt really good though. Okay. So maybe more like an eight. Okay, so oh. seven and eight on B. Yeah. Good. Okay. You're keeping me on my toes. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I yeah, like it. That's good, man. That's good. All right. Let's go into Archon territory here. We'll do one of those. Okay. These are archons, right? Yep. Five, three. Okay. Uh, B, the tone was probably a six or a seven. A little dark. Okay. But the feel was really good, like an eight. Okay. Nice. Eight. Okay. So. All right. So you want to go six or seven on uh, B. B. We'll go, we'll go seven, but okay. I, I would probably give it a little more mid range and presence. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. So I'm glad you're, you're adding those comments because at least it shows that, like, you know, it's a neutral tone yeah. and, you know, if you added this or that, it might get a higher score or sure. whatever. All right, so let's go on to, let's do a rev. <laughs> for a five for feel okay so both okay and then uh, what about B B was eight for tone nine for feel I yeah. saw really the look nice. on your face yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like a lion that just saw a gazelle run yeah. by. <laughs> Thank you. 
both good. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, All right. Let's say a seven for A. Okay. Six for feel. Okay. The tone for B was like a seven, but the feel was more of an eight or a nine. Okay. So okay. Yeah, B, B has consistently felt better, but it's been darker. Okay. A little too dark for my taste. Gotcha. But, but well, let me just say, let me ask you this then. So, like, let's say, you know, conversely, like, B was too dark for your taste, but if you could touch the EQ and make it the way you wanted probably would, would be a better score yeah probably, okay yeah. all right so but compared to the A and B like which one like uh, how far apart are they like are they oh, just boy. two points apart are they no, further no and, and it's not it's not tone I mean A is A is the tone is not bad okay um it's just the feel of B has been consistently way consistently better, better. Yeah. okay Okay. This one was a little bit more. Uh, both of them could be cleaned up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Sure. It, it, it differently, but. Sure. Um, let's give B a seven tone and feel, and A like five tone and feel. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> But B had a little bit of more gain for me to, you know, in guess it was easier for me to play a little bit. So it felt better. Yeah. Okay. Let's, we'll say that. Okay. Um, a f sounded a little cleaner, but it still f felt pretty dry to me. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Just did it fight you or support your playing or? Um, it it fought me to an extent. Like it made me want to play a certain way, f you know, to. Give a certain feel. Okay. Like I'm starting off a song and it's about to explode. That's the tone I would use. Oh, okay. For, you know. Okay. So it's like don't go too. So it's basically not, pretty much telling me don't go too crazy. Phil. Ah, Relax. gotcha. So it's a little more help held me back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Which isn't, you know. Okay. You know, if the if the time calls for it, isn't always a bad thing. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it's a little riddling. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let's well, give B both feel and tone a seven. Okay. And A. Didn't sound that bad. Let's just give that a five and okay. the feel a seven. Okay. So it felt the same. Yeah. I guess so. I don't know. Because I mean, <laughs> you were saying it was holding you back, so I'm just making. Oh, sure. you know what? You're right. Yeah. I'll just give it a five. All <laughs> Not trying to eight. five all around. Yeah. Bait the you witness here. I'm just trying to. <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. I'm not yeah. trying. I'm trying not to take up too much time. No. No. You're good. Yeah. You're good, dude. Okay, here comes a basement, or maybe it's one of yours. I don't know. Well, I know. <laughs> here we go. <laughs>
he's starting to become my friend. Yeah. <laughs> um, it All felt right. more alive to okay. me. Um, it, like, actually was pretty close to being the perfect clean tone for me. Okay. Uh, if I just, if I do the coil tap, make it single coil. And, uh, That's what I do. Change the pickup. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Um, it's lush. Yes. There's a lushness that comes from using the coil tap. It just yeah. there's a sparkle there. And, and did you just got to sprinkle on some some effects there? Yeah. You got yourself a beautiful tone. I'm gonna give it an eight. An eight for both. Eight uh, for both. Yep. And, okay. And a I'll give. It wasn't that bad. I'll give it about a five for both feel and tone. So a was five and b was eight. Yes. Okay. okay. All right, guys. Well, so I know this was a long night. It was a little longer than I expected it to be. And <laughs> no <here> way. <laughs> well, that's why I gave you. A, <laughs> that's why I gave you a lot of pizza. Um, but I will say that um, I did this because I wanted to be thorough. I wanted it to be super thorough. And so at the end of this, like um, I had, I even cut out some of the presets. And profiles. I had probably like 15 more, but as the night was going, I was like, I better, I better file some of this stuff off because it would. But I liked the fact that you guys were thorough. I liked the fact that everybody played everything and gave their true thoughts about it. And and it's a blind test, so it's like there's no, <laughs> there's no like nobody really knew what they were playing, you know. Um, and uh, so how uh, I guess. What do you think, like... Uh, do you want to give the results? They're yeah. all waiting. All right, let's give <laughs> the results. Like, Generation X is like, I stuck it out this long. I'm not leaving without knowing the results. <laughs> all right. <laughs> First $100 super chat, we will release the... <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm kidding. So all how right. do you want to know? I've got the total for the Kemper and the total for the Helix. Total for the Kemper, total for the Helix. Let, and we'll give the totals, and then we'll break down the tone and feel. How's that? Drum roll. Sure. <laughs> drum roll. Right. All, right. <laughs> All right. So we've got the Helix coming in at 669 points. Oh. And the Kemper came in at 883 wow. points. 883. 883. Yep. So the Kemper, at least for this competition regarding tone and feel and blind test, uh, came out came out ahead. Yeah. Um, it's, did, you, did you just add tone and feel together? Yes. Yeah. For the, Yep. yep, so we added tone and feel together. Now we can score. Let's go through each guy. Yeah. And give the scores now I for go each back guy. Back to the top. All and right. she, I have to give her lot mad prop, props. Uh, props. She, yeah, mad give her props, props too. <laughs> I don't know what a prop is, but you can have one of those. Um, she she put together. Prop bloomer. <laughs> <laughs> she put together this uh, this spreadsheet and did Thank a great you. job. So TJ for the Kemper EVH tones, you scored that a fifty compared to the Helix twenty two. Yep. Uh, Aaron, for the, uh, do you want me to do all one person, or do you want me to keep one um, line? Yeah, let, what's, do you got TJ's total score somewhere? Let's see. I don't see. know if you got that in there or not. Down at the bottom. Down at the bottom. Yep. Okay, so TJ. Okay, so just the total scores. Totals. All right, yeah. TJ, total score for the Kemper, 225. Helix was 113. So, pretty big yep. margin there. Total score for Aaron Lucas. 169 for the Kemper, 155 for the Helix. Okay. So not such a big margin. Yep. Uh, let's see. Third was Johnny Neville. 163 for the Kemper, 119 for the Helix. Okay. That's a trend. <laughs> yeah, I'm sensing a trend too. Those ones you're looking for. Yeah. <laughs> Dave Seymour, our, our picky one. 170 for the Kemper, 135 for the Helix. Yep. Wow. Yep. And this then, is an amp guy. last, yeah, he was an amp guy, yep. uh, is Phil, 156 for the Kemper, 152 for the Helix. Wow, Phil was the closest yeah. out, of, out of them. Yep. Wow, interesting. Very interesting. So, uh, now that you guys know the results, what do you think? Well, I've, I have tried the Kemper in the past, after years of my Helix. Mm -hmm. um, I've always known I love the Kemper. Um, I think at the time I tried it was before they came out with the stage model, oh, and that yeah. was the biggest thing that prevented me from getting in the first place. Was the form factor, right? Yeah. And that's yeah. why I'm doing this, is because the form factor was kind of a game changer for everybody. Yeah. It was like, all right, well, maybe I should consider this yeah. now. I'm not bringing a toaster and a, <clears throat> you know, a controller you right. know, to a gig with me. It's just one thing. But considering how close it was for me, 
I don't know if I'll be making a change anytime soon, but definitely this this night has definitely put it into consideration. Okay, all right. Well, let me let me just add this to it as well. Um, and I'm not trying to steer anybody any way at all. I'm just trying to be as objective as possible. Um, I pretty much picked all the tones based on what I thought you guys would like. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I went to lower gain stuff. I don't play lower gain tones, so because I don't, I don't really know exactly what you guys are looking for, and that's why I use some of your tones, and then I found stuff that was similar to it. Um, and then the rest of it was kind of a guess. Um, and uh, so I th and do you think that maybe if you picked out your own tones to match between the two, do you think that there would be a bigger difference between the two? And I guess this goes to everybody, you know. I guess it's a good question because at that point, how, you know, how big of a bias would it be by the individual at that point? How blind of the test would it really be? Um, I, th I think um, because... I mean, if, if it's just you doing it, I don't really think there's any bias. Um, in fact, if there is any, it would be tw it would be with the product that you're currently using because you'd rather not switch from it. You That's, know? Fair. That's fair. You know what I mean? It feels more like, oh, this is mine. And I don't, it, this thing better really blow my head off or else I'm not going to switch to it. all this so. money on this. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> I, I think it's a fair test if you go into a Kemper or, let's just say, an opposing product yeah. and go, all right, like I want to know if this, is going to be worth switching to and you're going to find stuff that you dig and play that and and take it from there now tj and i uh we've we've jammed a lot together and i as far as the high gain stuff goes like i think i kind of nailed it with what you were looking for yeah because close. there was a huge difference there and yeah. my in my thinking i would probably be aligned with you as far as the margin of difference between the two you know, it's funny you say that because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm an engineer. I, I do audio production and everything. And uh, the first album I put out, I used Bias FX, mm -hmm. which was great. I thought it sounded awesome. And, of course, I was a Helix user at the time, too. Yeah. Um, but the more I did, like, engineering, the more I missed that cabinet in the room kind of sound. Hmm. And I couldn't achieve that with the, the Helix or even Bias. I mean, it was close. Yeah. And, and I got really awesome tones out of both both uh, products, but I think the Kemper uh, kind of comes closer to home. I mean, it's no replacement for an amp in the room. It's definitely, there's, there's, uh, it's close, but there's, there's no replacing a, an amp with a good mic and uh, oh, a good tube tone. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, I, it, it's uh, definitely a lot closer. And, you know, I, uh, <coughs> I started reamping for a symphonic metal bra uh, band, mm -hmm. and the Kemper just cuts right through. Yeah. So you you own both. Yes. So and you've had time to tweak both. Yeah. So what would you do? What would you uh, like better? Well, I, I, yeah, I could say that I wasn't in the competition. So um, I mean, I, I will say this: I love my Helix for for cable method. So like I got you guys know I got my Synergy rig upstairs mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it switches everything. It's very easy to con to program. There's just tons of in it. I O the I O on this is amazing. Um, you know, and uh, so programming it was very easy. The effects are really good, so I prefer this for uh, to use with real amps, but I prefer the Kemper to replace them. Mm. You know what I mean? So because this this does have, in in my opinion, in my experience, it does have the feel that I'm looking for. Okay. And the thing is, is if your ears love something but your hands don't, it doesn't matter because if you can't play it. The way you need to play it it doesn't matter what your ears <laughs> say you know um your ears become secondary and your hands i think are the authority because no matter how good something sounds if it feels like crap you, you it it loses you mm -hmm. know your hands have to be happy and you listen with your hands you really do because um but but rarely does something sound awesome and feel horrible you know usually the two are pretty close you know what i mean um so yeah, as far as the feel goes, uh, and if I had to take one unit with me and no amps, and I just had to do like a fly gig or whatever, I would definitely take the Kemper hands down for that. But again, this is great for four cable methods. Well, I was gonna say, if you're going on tour in like the US, you know, and you wanna bring your tube amps, use that in four cable, you get all these great effects. Yeah. And these, uh, you know, amazing switching capabilities, especially if you use MIDI. But yeah. if you're going like overseas to where you can't, bring all that stuff 
you know, bring a Kemper or bring a thumb drive and ask for a Kemper. Your whole rig's on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, ask for a Kemper and backline, and your whole your whole rig mm -hmm. is on a thumb drive in your, in your pocket. It's amazing. And you pop it in, <laughs> and it, you load it in, and you're done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You it's know. Like we got seconds. another super chat. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm probably going to slaughter your name, but Yoyos, Y-O-Y-O-O-S. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I appreciate that. And then he also commented below, that's the exact reason he chose the Kemper stage, to get rid of the needing an amp and to be able to play in a condo. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it, it, I, I will say this. <laughs> I, will, I will say this, like, to you guys, like, again, to be fair, um, I dialed in the tones. I, I shouldn't say I dialed them in because of the Kemper. I chose them. I didn't do anything as far as the dialing in goes. I Some of these I used the same IR. Some of them I didn't. Um, and I felt like uh, if I spent all this time tweaking the Kemper and stuff, I felt like I would... I, maybe some people would think I gave it an unfair advantage because mm -hmm. I was like, well, you, you know, you tried to make it sound better. And, you know, so to your issues late earlier, like, you know, that needs more of this, I literally let left about 90% of these flat. There was, everything was at noon. So, um, uh, in hindsight, maybe I could have tweaked some things. Um, I don't know because I was just trying to be as objective as possible. So, because profiles, when you get them, they're just, it's just like, here's your profile. Sure. You can tweak it, obviously, but again, I just try to be as fair as possible. And these all have tweaks on them, you know. Ben asked, how did the purchase presets do compared to the homebrewed presets? Oh, well, uh, why don't you go up and, um, shoot, I got all my paperwork down there. I'll, I'll just say this. I'll just say this. Yep. I'm, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, <laughs> but I made a lot of presets for this. And there was a couple that TJ picked that were really close that I made. Mm -hmm. And there were some that you picked that were that I, I made. And it seems like the ones that I made uh, fared, and I, I know this sounds like I'm being super biased. It just is what it is, you know. Well, um, the scores are the scores. The yeah, the scores good. are the scores. So the ones I made ended up uh, being closer, you know, between the Kemper and the Helix. And the ones that I purchased were further <laughs> away. I'll just say that, mm -hmm. you know. Andrew Stone Rock says, I think it's just Helix for the people who want total control for the money versus people who want to just plug and play. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you, again, if you're looking at incorporating something with your current tube amp rig, like let's say Dave wanted to get something with effects that would switch your amp and, you know, switch channels and sure. you have all these effects. I This is really great, mm -hmm. you know, but... Um, if you came to me and said, well, which one should I buy? Because I want one that will switch channels, but also give me effects. And every once in a while, I just don't want to bring my amp to a gig. Mm -hmm. I would tell you to buy that. Yeah. Because this I'd, will I'd be both. The Kemper. Point into the Kemper. Yeah, yeah point into the Kemper. Because <laughs> the Kemper does have the feel. And it was interesting, too, like some of the tones that you liked better, but you still like the feel here. You can't fix feel, but mm -hmm. you can fix tone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, if Dave didn't like one of the tones in the Kemper and thought that it was a little too dark, which was some of the, the comments that you made, mm -hmm. um, but you like the feel better, all you have to do is just turn up the highs and the sure. treble, and Easy. then, you know, Kemper's your guy, you know? So... Um, and I know I'm trying to, I'm not, I'm not trying to sound like a Kemper fan here. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, I'm just trying to be fair and, uh, be very balanced with my points here, you know? Uh, so you had something earlier that you were going to refer to later as far as that goes. Well, so. well, it's just, it's very similar to what we're saying right this second. Okay. You know, um, when we go into a music store and plug into an amp, first thing we do is we're, we're reaching for that the knobs and we dial in the way we want it mm -hmm. and we can't in in this situation we can't do that time restraints and all that and all you that can't see stuff. what you're playing yeah, yeah. <laughs> so is it fair not to tweak something to the best of its ability um i think that it's fair to do that Yes. We but, could do that in another episode where yeah. we just have one player, one or two yeah. players, yeah. and yeah. spend a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And because, again, even if I did do a bunch of tweaks, I've, I mean, far be it for me to choose Dave's settings for him. You know what I mean? I mean, you would come in and go, what the hell were you thinking? I would want it like this. You know what I mean? It's, I it's, we'd be that far off. Well, maybe, maybe not, but I, I definitely didn't want to be presumptuous. You know what I mean? So that's one of the reasons why I kind of left things 
you know, neutral. Um, now, in hindsight, could I have matched, you know, like if the treble here was 5.5, should it be 5.5 there? Well, mm. the thing is, though, is 5.5 on here could be 4.8 on here. Exactly. Because all treble knobs are different. They just yeah. are, you know. So um, so that was the thing that was going through my mind, too. There are, you know? there are so many variables. Like, yeah. Like, like my, my fireball has a mid-range boost. Yep. Now, there's our... Our rhythm guitar player Petter, he doesn't make it to all the practices. Mm -hmm. When he's there, the mid, mid range boost has to be engaged, otherwise I'm not going to hear myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When he's gone, I take it out. Okay. It's more around. So it, 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 every situation is different. Every no, room you're right. Is different. It's mm -hmm. a good point. Mm -hmm. It really is a good point. You know. Um, so I think according to the scores, everybody felt that the Kemper felt mm -hmm. better. Yep. Kemper okay. won each time. Okay. So the Kemper won each time in tone and feel. Yes. So. So let me just say this then, and and if anybody here disagrees with me, please speak up because this, uh, you know, it that's what this is about. It's a forum to talk. If the Kemper feels better, and it's scored better, you know, between the two units, and um, you all you had to do was tweak a few things as far as you know mid, treble, presence, whatever. And then you can make it to your taste. And then I think that you would, would probably separate the two even more. Hmm. So instead of a score <laughs> between 883 and 674, maybe it would be, you know, a bigger margin. I don't know what that number would be. But because once, again, feel is so important. I mean, would we all agree? Would you, was there anybody here that would play a product that sounds um, great but feels terrible? I do every time I go to Guitar Center. <laughs> <laughs> so, so nobody would. So would anybody here play a product that feels absolutely fantastic but lacks a little bit in the tone, but with some tweaks it would fix it? Absolutely. Of course. Yeah, okay. you, can, you can fix the tone somehow. Yeah. So tone's all fixable, but feel is not. Mm -hmm. Because feel is feel. So mm -hmm. so I think, and again, I bring this up because that's something that the viewers aren't experiencing. They're not experiencing the feel factor. They're just switch experiencing. Switch a cab, switch mm -hmm. an IR, yeah. presence, more yeah. kids, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And this captures that chewiness. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that I loved in the Kemper was the chewiness. Like every time I played a good profile, there was something where I could feel the pick. Not passing the string, but digging into it and then passing it. There was like that diggy chewiness, like awesomeness, you know. <laughs> and I just, I, I love how it feels, you know. Um, there was texture there, you know. And it was more fun to play. And one of the things that I noticed when I was down here dialing all this stuff in was I would spend, any time I found something that I dug, that's probably one of the reasons why it took me so long, because I'd sit there and play for 10 minutes and go, get back to work, <laughs> because you're just having too much fun. So uh, Johnny and Aaron, uh, what did you guys think about like the score results and all that happy stuff? Um, I don't know. I think it's interesting. I think it's... Like, cool to know. I think uh, both of them have, you know, you can definitely get to what you want, you know, on either unit. You had a but, decent uh, uh, gap between Helix and well, was, You were 163 oh, yeah. and 119. Yeah. yeah. But, sure I mean, I'm, I'm honestly considering getting a, getting a Kemper in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I let mean, me... just to have both, just to mess around with it. Sure. I think well, it's good to try out. Yeah, because there was actually a point where he accidentally hit both switches. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It actually sounded pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded pretty awesome. Yeah. So I wanted to ask, Jared, I'm not sure, um, sure, in your last shows or whatever, did you uh, use both of them in your setup? Um, on my last... Uh, Anastasi show? Anastasi show? Yeah, the like, last couple are pretty much whenever you got the toaster? Oh, I used the toaster a couple times. I, when, when I was on stage with TJ one time, I used it. But um, I also, I have a Synergy rig upstairs that I adore. And <laughs> so, like, I, I play that mm. for most of our shows, um, you know, with, with the Helix as a controller and effects unit. Okay. Um, because, now here's the thing. I'm glad you asked me that because at the time I had the toaster and I had the remote separate. So going to a show and having to hook all that stuff up oh, and everything man. was a bit of a hassle for me yeah, yeah. compared to hooking up the Helix with my Synergy rig because that's in a rack. 
and this is in a case. I plop it on the floor. I got my cables all snaked together. I plug everything into the same color. You know, I got those colored nuts, mm -hmm. and I'm done. You know, and it's super easy. So because of that, I, I chose that. Now that I have this form factor, and that's why I'm doing this video, because this form factor changes everything. Mm -hmm. Now, if I had to do another show, it's not that I prefer this over my Synergy rig, because I love that. I just love it very much. But, you know, you know how local shows are. Mm -hmm. 20 minutes, you get set up and get on stage, 20. and then you got, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you're lucky, <laughs> yeah, if you're lucky, you get 20 minutes, um, so t let's just say 10, I mean, depending on the show, I would probably just bring this, you know, because this, this does everything I want it to do, and I'm not giving up the feel, I still got the feel and the tone and everything that I like, um, so I think that, excuse me, I think that, um, anybody here that has a Helix, uh, I would recommend that you at least shoot them out for yourself and find your own tones and shoot them out and feel what you want to feel and and you know what I mean and at that point you would because again they're only a hundred bucks apart <clears throat> you know what I mean so a hundred dollars mm -hmm. more you get the Kemper and you get yeah I mean uh, in in my opinion I just I, again I think they're great units this is made the more helix. for the Helix is made more for working with your gear. The Kemper was made more for replacing it, mm -hmm. you know. So, Aaron, what did you think? Yeah, I am. Um, the The band that, that that I'm in is we just finished wrapping a CD a recording. Uh -huh. Um, everything but one song was the Helix. Okay. Um, I got the Kemper like a week before we had to retract one of our songs. Okay. So part of me was like, sink or swim. What a better way to learn it than this? Yeah. You know? And um, I'm the type of person when I root for something. I want the score to be like 100 to nothing. Yeah. You know, yeah. when I watch the Lions, I want it to be 100 to nothing. I never get that, but that's what <laughs> I want, you know. Yeah. Um, I came into this, honestly, kind of rooting for the Kemper stuff because I just spent some money on it. So, obviously, my last, you know, hardened dough, you want it to be the, the you want it to have the edge. I was shocked that maybe it wasn't a blowout with the Helix. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I'm kind of coming with a couple of random points. That one of the people that was watching was mentioning about how the, the style of players were similar. And mm -hmm. I personally don't consider myself a, a, a metal guy. I yeah. love every single one of these guys. These bands are just are top notch. But one thing I've, I've noticed with the Kemper that I kind of feel maybe I'm wrong. And so I'm, as I'm, it's a statement, but it's a question. I want you to bust me if I'm wrong. Is I'm at that spot with having the Kemper only a few weeks. Is that I'm doing the exploration. Yeah. You know, all of the players that I look up to, which is a lot of blues based players, like mm -hmm. you know, Warren Haynes, Coco Montoya. Kenny Wing Shepard, a lot of those guys were probably a lot of metal guys are like, cocoa, chocolate, what, you know? <laughs> it's, like, you know it's I'm I'm seeing some of the amps that they're using, which is amps Speaking like your chocolate. car amp. <laughs> you know, um, you know uh, and I I guess so the, the point I'm trying to get to is that some, for me, while there's, I'm going through that learning curve with the Yeah, camper, there's um, a bit of it. It's, yeah. while I, I'm, I, we even like you talk, me and I talk, some of the effects I use are sparse in here and there. Mm -hmm. It's convenient on a Helix to know, like, this button right here is going to do that. I'm not jumping to another profile. It's just getting used to that. Yeah. But am I wrong to feel maybe that the Kemper has the edge automatically? Because, like like I said, I, you know, I watched some of these blues guys forever. They were using a car amp. The Helix doesn't have a car amp, and it's almost too boutique for it to even be on the radar. Yeah. You know, I went on the free Kemper website. There's, like, ten of them right there. Yeah. That I could just download and get, you know, and honestly, I played it through my Strat. I thought it was terrible. I grabbed my Les Paul and I was like, I'm using this. I almost wanted yeah. to go back and retract some other things just, just yeah. because I'm like, wow, I finally, you know. Yeah. And it, it puts you in that spot where you turn into the 12 year old kid of, you know, the guys with the pictures on my walls, I've got their gear, you know. Yeah. And I, I, while the Helix is great, it's been good to me for, for mm -hmm. years, you know. Yeah. I just almost feel like the Kemper, the fact that it's giving you all those amp options and it's not processed. You know, yeah. some of the problem I had with the Helix was it was too hard to use the Helix and not sound like you were playing through a computer. Mm. Gotcha. And with yeah. the Kemper, it seems like I just feel like it cuts all that out. Yeah. You know. Well, the Kemper is only as good as the profiles that are in it. Yeah. So, you know, you can play, and we've all done it. I mean, all of us guys that play Kempers, I mean, you, you could pull up a horrible profile, but you can't judge the product based on the profile that you're playing through the profile yeah. might be just be right. crap and that's why i used a lot of different profiles because if one really like with phil he was like wow this this is terrible you know and then the next one he's like oh it just redeemed itself perfect example of what yeah. i was saying you know um because you can have that just 
yin and yang, and I did that on purpose. I didn't pick crappy profiles. I just picked stuff that I thought would match whatever it was going up against, but I'm not you, <laughs> you right, know, and, right. and so I do the best I can with that. But, I mean, what was good about that was, um, like getting back to what you're saying, is, like, there is a little bit of a learning curve uh, with, with anything, though, you know. So, uh, you know, but I think that if you spent enough time, let's just – talk about the Kemper for a minute if you spend enough time with the Kemper and I'm not talking weeks I'm talking a, a day or two maybe a couple hours per day and found some profiles that work for you I think that you would be completely happy with it sure. and some of the subtleties as far as the chewiness the the feel and all that kind of stuff might take a few days yeah. but then what I would recommend anybody do is play this for I don't know a couple days a couple band practices <laughs> Then go back to the product, whatever it is, whether it's a Helix, a Head Rush, or X Effects, doesn't matter. And then judge them based how they feel now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then go, all right, I can see, you know, a lack here, or or maybe not. You know, and then that will give you a better idea um, of what's going on there. You know, so I think giving it a fair shake with the kind of stuff that you dig and you pick it out and you dial it in is the best way to test yeah, it out. Sure. You know, so. All right. Well, I want to uh, thank everybody for coming. We gonna we're gonna get some more pizza because uh, yeah. get some food. This one's getting hangry. But, uh, yeah. More thank beer. you. We'll have a there we go. <laughs> There's plenty of beer up there. Well, I want to thank all you guys. If it wasn't for you guys coming here and spending the evening and the afternoon with us, this wouldn't have been what it is. So. And thank you guys for putting all of the time and the back end oh, things yeah. and just making this right. happen and having us out. Our, Our pleasure. We did. Yeah. Our pleasure. It really was. I mean, it, it wouldn't be what it is without all of us working together. That's so right. we really appreciate it so thank you all for watching and um you know please uh share this and feel free to comment we want to know what your thoughts are about tonight and this did go a little longer than we thought but <laughs> just two hours yeah, longer yeah. but no it was worth deal. it it was worth it <laughs> it was definitely worth it because Absolutely. i think this was a very thorough uh you know shootout so all of our fight nights will not be this long though. no 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 <laughs> kind of have a learning curve too yeah exactly. but tune in it's the first sunday of every month that's when we're doing our fight nights our next episode will be the freedman asc 12 against the new line six power cab 2x12 there were a lot of comments tonight about uh our freedman amps in here and a lot of people were very curious and wanted to know so Stay tuned next month. It'll be all yep. those questions will be answered. Yep. Freeman right? ASC 12 versus the new Line 6 uh, Power Cab 2x12. All right. That's the next shootout. And, and the next then uh, the following one, then, now that we have a winner Kemper versus Axe FX3. That's right. That's the next one. So, all right, well, stay tuned, guys. And I got to find where the mouse is clicking here. Can you scoot up just a hair, Mr. Johnny? It's yeah, <laughs> there we go. And thank you very much, everybody. Have a good night. Love you all, and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>